Hi everyone, <clears throat> I welcome you to another lecture on the general physiology of the cell. In this lecture, we are going to look at cell junctions. <clears throat> we are going to look at cell junctions. We'll start by defining what a cell junction is. A cell junction is the connection between the neighboring cells, or we can say it's the contact between the cell and the extracellular matrix. The other name for cell junction is also called the membrane junction. Now, I've used the word extracellular matrix. What is an extracellular matrix? From the word extracellular, meaning it's found outside the cell. So an extracellular matrix is a network of uh, extracellular macromolecules, such as collagen, enzymes, glycoproteins, okay, outside the cell, found in the interstitium. So these uh, extracellular matrix, they provide structural and biochemical support to the, to the cell. Okay, so uh, the cell junction is defined as the connection between cells or it can be a connection between a cell and the extracellular matrix. Now, in terms of classification, these cell junctions are classified into three. We have the occluding junctions, we have the communicating junctions, and then we have the anchoring junctions. Just from these words, you can tell what they are. Okay, occlude. To occlude is to prevent, to stop. Okay, communicate. Communication is um, exchange of information. In this, in this case, cells are able to exchange information in form of ions and uh, molecules. Anchoring junction is to, to support. Okay, so these are the types of cell junctions that we are going to find in cells. Now, first of all, let's look at the occluding junctions. Let's look at the occluding junctions. Now, in terms of uh, the occluding junctions, we can define them as junctions that prevents intercellular exchange of substances. Okay? Junctions that prevent intercellular exchange of substances. So these junctions, they prevent the movement of ions such as sodium, potassium, and many other ions and molecules. A very good example of uh, occluding junctions, these are the common ones we call the tight junctions. The other name for tight junctions, they are also called zonular occludins. The other name for the tight junction, they are called zonular Occludings. So how can you describe these tight junctions? First of all, it's important to know that these tight junctions, they are located in many parts of the body. Okay? We have tight junctions uh, in the apical margins of the epithelial and endothelial cells. We have tight junction in the intestinal mucosa. We have tight junction in the renal tubules. We have tight junction in the uh, capillary wall. We have tight junction in the choroid plexus. Remember, a choroid plexus this is a tissue that produces uh, uh, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So we have these tight junctions. So how can you describe these tight junctions? As you can see, this is another cell. So they are made up of a ridge which has two halves. One half of the ridge is from, uh, from one cell. Another half is from the other cell. Okay. And at molecular level, the tight junctions, they are made up of a protein. So these are tight junctions. They are made up of protein complex. This protein complex can be occluding. They can be clouding. They can be e cadherin they can be ZO1, there's JAM, JAM1, JAM is just another, uh, the other name for 
or it means junctional adhesion molecules. They can be catenins, they can be sanguine, sanguine, and they can be actin. Okay, we'll not discuss uh, in detail these proteins, but we know that uh, when you analyze the, the tight junctions, you are able to find these, uh, these types of proteins. And these proteins are integral proteins. We remember that integral proteins are proteins that span the length of the, of the membrane. Okay. These are, they, they span the length of the membrane. Now, what's the function of these tight junctions? They, uh, what should come to your mind is about strength and stability. Okay, they hold the cells together. They, they act as barriers, okay, so that they can selectively uh, uh, allow certain substances to pass. So there are some tight junctions which are total barriers for large molecules. Other tight junctions can allow uh, certain substances to pass through them. So the, the, the tight junction properties is dependent upon the, the tissue type, okay, where they are found. Another important function of the tight junction, they help to maintain the polarity of cells by preventing the lateral diffusion of uh, integral membrane proteins between the apical and lateral basal surfaces. Okay, this is also called the fencing function. They, okay, so tight junction help to maintain the polarity of cells by preventing the lateral diffusion of the integral membrane proteins between the apical and lateral basal cell. You find that a normal cell has what you call the cell membrane potential. Okay, where the inside is more negative and the outside is more positive. We'll talk about that. That electrical difference is, is very important in, uh, in physiology. And then also tight junctions, they prevent the passage of molecules and ions through the space between plasma membrane or, or adjacent cells. Okay, so these are some of the functions of the tight junctions. So I've mentioned four strength and stability that is holding them together barrier functions which is selective permeability tight junction help to maintain polarity of cell which we can say they maintain uh, cell polarity tight junction prevent the passage of uh, molecules and ions okay so these are the functions of the tight junctions a good example of tight junctions is this the blood brain barrier is an example of a tight junction. Now, what is the blood brain barrier? The blood brain barrier is a barrier which prevents the entrance of many substances from the capillary blood into the brain tissue. Remember, the brain tissue is a very delicate cells. They are very delicate cells because that's where there's processing of information, the action potentials, uh, their processes, sensory inputs, they are integrated in the brain. So the brain has to be protected from uh, substances which can be found in blood. Okay, so there's what we call the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier. As you can see, this is a transverse section. This is a transfer. A normal blood vessel will have, which is a capillary, it will have fenestrated capi uh, pores such that substances can pass, can move from the blood. This is the lumen of the blood into the, into the cell. Okay. But around the brain, you can see here there are some tight junctions, no pores. Okay, so this tight junction, you find that it's made up of particular proteins, which we, I mentioned. So they are held together. They are held together and can only allow lipid-soluble substances to pass through. Okay, and they are also reinforced, these, the glia uh, brain cells, 
they support this barrier. These are supporting uh, brain cells. Not really the neurons, but there are some what you call supporting uh, brain cells. The astrocytes, the, 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 astro the glia cells, okay, they support the, this same barrier. So this is about the occluding junctions. And the, a good example of occluding junctions are the tight junctions. Okay. <laughs>